we certainly play with southern flavors here and there. But even being born and raised here in Nashville, I just don't consider myself a southern chef. In the way that we cook, I almost think it influences us in the opposite way. Like, we're not going to put pork in every dish, almost as a rule. And so we sort of challenge ourselves not to be anti-national or anti-Southern, but just to approach food the way we approach food versus falling into a particular frame of mind. Henrietta is my paternal grandmother, and then Red was her husband, my grandfather. They were just really a super sweet, hospitable Southern couple, and I really, really looked up to them growing up. A friend of mine has a bar in New York that's named after his grandparents, and I thought, that's such a nice gesture. It's such a nice way to carry on that hospitable spirit. I was very lucky growing up. My mother and my stepmother and my dad all cooked at home, so I grew up eating home-cooked meals. It definitely wasn't a hobby of mine until I went to France for a summer, and this family I lived with was growing food in their backyard and cooking meals at home. And it changed my perspective a little bit on you know where everything comes from, and wow, this is so easy that they're just doing that this way, and it makes such a difference in the taste. And so it really got my attention for the first time in terms of food. So growing up, anytime we would have people over to the house, my dad would make a dish for parties where he would take sour cream and dump it on a plate and then cover it in a green onion vinaigrette that he made off the cuff. And then top it with some really, really inexpensive grocery store fish roe and serve it with some crackers. And I think because it hit all parts of your palate, the like creamy fattiness, the saltiness of the fish roe, the acid of the vinaigrette, and all those herbs, it was just totally addictive. My sister and I, even as kids, would just sit there and eat and eat and eat. And I always had this really strong taste memory of what that was like. When we were opening this restaurant, Tennessee has this great paddlefish caviar. I really wanted to put that on the menu and I really wanted it to sort of fit into the theme of family. It's been on the menu since we opened. It's one of our favorite dishes. We are in a landlocked state, and so we do try to make seafood choices that are going to have a good shelf life. Oysters are really important to me. I just find them fascinating, and I love eating it. I want to start my night at like an oyster happy hour. That's something that you couldn't really do here previously. There are places that serve them, but I don't think the quality or the selection or the attention to detail is really there. We wanted to bring purveyors who weren't being represented here yet, and so I think we achieved those things. <laughs> Clams like oysters are one of those. If you get them harvested really fresh, they'll last a few days. We like to do mussels and clams on the menu pretty frequently. This particular dish is a red curry, which I got when I went to a little cooking school on a trip abroad to Thailand in college and just held on to these recipes from there. It's, you know, just garlic and shallot, sweat and some oil, and then we add the clams to that and steam them in some fish fume that we make from snapper bones and then we fry up some of the red curry paste and coconut milk. And then once the clams are open, we combine the two and garnish that with lots of herbs and sunflower sprouts to give it a real fresh appearance and flavor and crunch. But really letting the clams stand out with all these sort of like fresh contrasting flavors. We try to really keep up with the seasonal vegetables. In the summer, we're always trying to change one or two things a week. So as new things become available, we can tweak garnishes, we can tweak dishes and put new salads on and get it changing as often as possible. 
One of the varieties we're using is called the Badger Flame Beet. It is, you know, a long, round, golden beet that one of our farmers named Julie at Rocky Glade Farm in Eagleville, Tennessee is growing for us. And we are roasting those and slicing them into the coins and then spreading them out onto a plate with some Calabrian chili yogurt. It's really nice and spicy counterpoint to the sort of earthy sweet beet flavors. And then on top of that, we have uh, some diced plums, chiffonade of mint, and a pistachio crumble with some garlic and lemon zest. So, you know, it's a fairly straightforward presentation, but it, for us, like really showcases these vegetables that we're experimenting with this summer. I think that the variety, the quality, the depth of dining experience that has been grown here over the last 15, 10, even five years is like pretty astounding. And I think for the most part, it's all for good. I think some of it feels a little bit crazy and opportunistic and maybe won't last, you know. But I think the people who are here for the right reasons and care about Nashville and its economy are doing good things and people are really enjoying it.